Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Catapult and everybody who's here tonight. We're so glad to be with you. Um, I think this is such a timely topic, what successful dentists do differently, because we see, and I talk to dentists regularly, and they're just struggling through these really this really hard year. You know, you can be a great clinician and that great clinical practice, it doesn't always translate into financial success. So tonight we're gonna to talk about some keys to success, how successful dentists who are doing everything they can in the operatories and making sure that, they're, that there's good clinical practice in the hygiene room too, can use that clinical experience to generate a million dollar practice. And we're gonna talk about four specific things tonight. The importance of complete health, positioning your practice for success. We're gonna show you how to use a tool called a healthy mouth baseline. Um, it simplifies patient education. There's a standard of care we will also talk about that will get your focused, the whole team focused on certain aspects of care that make it really easy to explain to patients about the need and their attention that you're drawing to healthy gums. And then we're gonna do some prescription tray protocols that will both improve health and prevent um, breakdown over time. And I am so pleased um, to introduce you all to, to the CEO of Next Level Practice, Gary Cady. He's here with me tonight. Welcome, Gary. I'm so glad to have you there. So I'm the managing director at Periprotect. We met seven, eight years ago. We started working together and we got to know each other from one of your clients who was also um, using some of the services that Periprotect offers. And, you know, we kept hearing we should talk to each other, but this particular client in the middle of Kansas was doing amazing, both clinical practice, getting great results. I was talking and calling and hearing about the, the health, but also just doing financially terrific. Um, tell us a little bit about this client because it was the start. We were working to really build their practice and we know that they, they wanted to create a practice that had, you know, that they could be successful practice owners and then focus on the work they love and they found themselves like grappling with running the business side and they were frustrated, they were overwhelmed, they were grappling with how to do it all. It was like so complex. And, you know, we just went in there and we got to work and we simplified everything. And we believe that, that the hygiene department is the engine that runs a general dental practice. And if you're a specialist on tonight, it's like, if you wanna grow your referrals, it's like grow that hygiene department that grows the general practice, that grows, you know, everything. And it all comes from helping people get healthy. Um, and something magical started happening in this practice. I saw, I'm a numbers guy. So I saw numbers, Tanya, that I've never seen out of, a, out of a hygiene department. And in 2016, this practice in the middle of nowhere, Kansas with one stoplight, I, I visited the practice, did a million dollars in hygiene only. They're hygiene only. And so, you know, this is really key and why it's relevant today about why we're bringing this story up is because this is the key to running a business through this pandemic. You know, I ha I've had the privilege right now, I, you know, you, we and I talked before this session and people are beat up right now. They're frustrated. They're overwhelmed. They're, they're managing their home life and their business life and, and, and the, the clinical side and the business side. And, you know, the, the thing that worked to get this practice to be a million dollar practice is what's working today in uh, post pandemic, let's call it post if it's post, right? And what there is to do about it. And so tonight we're going to really, um, really go through um, and, and highlight some of the key elements of running this as a machine so that, you know, you can have the life you love, you know, it really is about, you know, creating, what is the destination, creating happy, healthy patients, getting your team, having them be motivated, you know, imagine walking into your morning huddle, your team knows what they need to do, how to do it. Um, they're inspired. They inspire you. You don't have to carry them up the mountain and, 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 and really drive them. They're driving the practice. And really, we're going to talk about how to be a profitable practice because hygiene is the key to running a profitable practice. And it's okay to be a great clinician and a, and a profitable business. The word is and, not or. And this really, we're also, you know, what we're going to talk about is really impacts vacation. And a lot of people are coming off of 2020, Tanya, and they're in this place of um, survival. And tonight, I hope people are listening that tonight is really about moving out of survival and into thriving and really allowing yourself to have the life you deserve and the life you, you've, you've designed when you said, I want to become a dentist. And, you know, a lot of our dentists um, are, we have spouse partners, 85% of them are husband and wife teams. And it's really about not like 
getting through the day or through the week or through the year. It's really about designing a, way, a life that you love and, you know, focusing on dentistry and the clinical side of what you really love to do and, and uh, really mitigating all this distraction and complexity of what you think you need to do today post pandemic. Right. And so when I've talked to a lot of doctors who have worked with you and your coaches, um, you know, they say things like, I took a vacation and I didn't even worry about the team at home, back there. You know, it, it ran without me and it was good. Or literally, this was, a, this was a phrase, I'm not worried about making sure we have enough toilet paper in the office anymore. Like doctors going down to the nitty gritty detail of administration, right? Moving beyond that. So let's look a little bit about some of the traits that what successful dentists do. And the number one thing they do is really focus on health, but it's not transactional dentistry and the traditional way of selling dentistry. It really is about positioning your practice um, for success, again, through the hygiene chair, right? Periodontal disease is the most underdiagnosed disease in the United States. And so you've got some startling stats here, Gary. So we're talking about hundreds of thousands of treatment plans that you have access to. And so here's the question, everybody. Hundreds of thousands of patients. What percentage do you think have even been diagnosed and treatment planned for scaling? Diagnosed and treatment planned for scaling. And we know lots of Americans over the age of 30, half of them, 47%, have periodontitis, not even gingivitis, right? So we got a couple chats coming through. These are all good, 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 good choices. This is what we usually see, right? Yeah. You want to let them know. And by the way, it's 10 million treatment plans that we have. Oh, 10 million. Not a, okay, so 10 million treatment plans over the years. Gary, what's your number? 8% diagnosed, 4% treated. 8% yeah. diagnosed, 4% treated. There is a huge opportunity here for you to get your patients healthier. And it's so important when we talk about having a robust immune system during a viral or a bacterial challenge. So focusing on health is the number one thing. Then making hygiene that cornerstone, right? And the healthy mouth baseline is going to help you do that. We're going to talk about that. It's a tool. We'll give you an option where you can actually go and look for yourself at some of these tools and actually get one tonight. Um, we're going to review two kinds of, of uh, prescription tray protocols. It's going to improve health and prevent breakdown over time. And this focus on health, it can really generate a million dollar practice for you. And then Gary, talk a little bit about um, the last two parts there, because those are important and we're really not going to get a chance to talk about those tonight. Yeah, let me just kind of do a quick highlight on those and give you some tools here. Because without these two items, clarifying the roles and decreasing drama in the office and automating systems and processes so you can measure, monitor, and make things go right. I want to really highlight um, the key element there. Number four is clarifying the roles and eliminating drama. See, when the attention's on the toxic team or the attention's on not, people not with the right roles and the right responsibilities, you get chaos and it's very difficult to put your attention on the patient and care for the patient. So I'm gonna give you some simple tools right now that change the culture of your practice. Number one, and this is a breakthrough awareness we had 26 years ago, and we've installed this in over 6,000 practices. And it, it takes where you might have like just big, you know, went into like, hey, it's just, I'm just gonna have a toxic team. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to attract my A team. You know, the things that, you know, without a good team, it's very difficult to, you know, educate your patients from complete health because you're just, your focus is on all the chaos and drama. Here's what it is. Every upset or inefficiency in a dental practice is based in one of two areas. It's a missing agreement or a broken agreement. I'll say that again. It's either a missing agreement or a broken agreement. And one of the things that we put inside are, are you know, if a dentist needs to have a handpiece and you can't do your job without that, a team leader or a manager, and if you're a doctor and you're managing, stop doing that. Um, it's called management by agreement. It's who's going to do it, what are you going to do, and by when will you get it done? This is the difference between taking this information tonight and actually getting it implemented. See, information without implementation has no value. Our focus tonight is really teaching you how to implement change so that life becomes easy for you. By the way, this is this will change every relationship you have if you operate by what we call management by agreement. And then you ask people 
if they agree to do it. So an example would be a hygienist. You know, we often hear Tanya like, I, I, I can't get my hygienist to use the intro camera, right? Just can't use it. So you ask them, so starting tomorrow, are you willing to put up four intro oral pictures in your hygiene room uh, starting tomorrow? Who, the hygienist, what, four hygiene pictures, by when, the by when is key because if you don't give them a by when, you don't have, you don't have a contract of timeliness. And this eliminates the, the emotion and it puts in facts and then you manage the agreement of facts. And so it's really, really important once you get this in. The next thing is once you have an, this, this distinction of a culture of agreements, then you have to get agreements for roles and responsibilities. So we believe every dental office should have an appointment coordinator and a treatment coordinator. You can't possibly answer the phone and do a treatment plan coming out for an $800 service, if you will, right? So you have to have those two uh, elements in the front desk. And we'll show you, if you think you can't afford payroll to do that, we'll show you how you can't, uh, you won't be able to afford not to have that. And the last thing is, is really moving away from transactional dentistry and transactional relationships that you have with your team. Like I trade time, like an employee trades time for money or uh, a patient trades, you know, I have a symptom and you're gonna trade a, uh, some form of care for money. That's transactional. I want you to begin to think in a transformational sense. When you offer your internal customer, which is your team, Trans, a transformational experience where they go to work and they get lit up and, and their work life is better than their home life. And you create that kind of culture. First of all, you're going to attract the best A talent. Second of all, you're going to retain them. Third of all, um, you're going to make a difference in their home life and they'll never leave. And so that's the internal customer, your team, your external customer, which is your patient. When you begin to introduce to them the transformation that's going to happen based upon the care you're going to offer, now all of a sudden they can you can take them on a journey and they they start seeing that their life's going to be better and impacted from the care that you provide. And this is really important because people buy emotionally and they justify by logic. So just like agreements take the emotion out when you're engaging your team and your patients, you want to engage them from an emotional standpoint. So these are some three simple uh, areas that you'll um, be able to take and, and apply right away. And it's, it's a game changer. And the offices that I've talked with, Gary, they do talk about it. Take, this is not something that happens overnight, right? These are steps you learn, you apply, you go back to. Um, but the offices I've talked to have said it really has transformed. It's a transformational journey. And we want tonight to talk about a transformational journey for your patients, all about the health of your patients, transforming their lives by getting them healthier. We know that 47% of American adults have chronic periodontitis. These are over the age of 30, 47% of Americans. That should shock us, right? What we're doing is really not working well. And if you look at how many people have gingivitis on top of it, um, this is a conservative number at 80%. Some people put it up over 90%. Um, these are big numbers. And, and what causes this? It's not that our treatments are, are not not working, they are working. It's just that the bacteria are working overtime too, right? So you get this bacterial community of biofilm that grows deep into a periodontal pocket. And there's nothing you can do between office visits. You, they come into the office, you do maintenance, you do scaling, you do surgery and it grows back. When your patients are at home, it doesn't matter if they have amazing toothbrushing technique, if they floss twice a day or not, if they rinse, it's not going to work because those tools don't get deep enough. So tonight we're talking about a prescription periodontal tray that will deliver medication really deep into the periodontal pocket so that the medication can fight the infection. Now the tray, it's just a delivery device. Whatever medication you put in there is up to you, the, the dentist, you get to choose, but there is great evidence, um, really good data for a broad spectrum antimicrobial, like a low concentration of hydrogen peroxide. All the research that I uh, know very well and some of the others that I've seen also, 1.7% um, um, hydrogen peroxide has been really, really effective. Now this tray um, is made specially 
for your patients, you send in a probing chart and a script and the, the lab techs will create a tray custom made for every single pocket. We want a six point probing chart, please. And then explaining this to the patients, right? It's just so important that they understand. And now, you know, if you leave this disease untreated, it, it can have serious consequences, right? It's not just about their smile and their oral health, although both of those are important. We're talking about quality of life issues, like long-term ability to enjoy food, to be with their friends without embarrassing halitosis. Um, but it's even more important to treat that oral infection and inflammation if we consider that chronic infections and inflammation of the gingival tissue makes it harder for type two diabetics to manage their blood sugar. I mean, the, this you can't deny this, um, this data. We know that these chronic infections and inflammation of the gingival tissue lead to inflammation in the cells lining the arteries. There's new research out that shows that this chronic infection is speeding up the progression of dementia. And there's so many other connections. We're talking about cancers, erectile dysfunction, pulmonary diseases, rheumatoid arthritis, and pregnancy complications. And if anything has come out of this pandemic, it's that we are aware that it matters that we're healthy, right? And we like to explain it to patients. Your immune system is like a battery. The more demand you place on this battery, on the immune system, the quicker its power fades. If you can unplug a chronic low-grade infection like gum disease from the immune system, you release the power of that immune system to focus on something else. So patients can understand, and I think in more, better than ever, how important it is to have healthy gums, but they don't really know what is healthy. And so, um, Gary, you and your group have designed a healthy mouth baseline. I'd like you to talk about it a little bit, please, because it's so powerful, this tool, um, when, it's, when it's put into place. We created this, Tanya, because um, this was for the non-confrontational dental practice, the non-salesy dental practice, the, uh, you know, the people that hate to sell. And I, I, I just hate that. It's like, I hate being sold. And I hate to, you know, when somebody will walk in and I feel like I'm being sold on things. And so one of the things, our, one of our premises is we share intelligent things with intelligent patients so they can make intelligent decisions. And what we found was when I first got into this business 26 years ago, um, there was no tool that really laid out what's healthy and what's not, you know, because if you, if you ask a patient, you know, anytime they go into a dental office, I always share what I do and they go, well, oh yeah, my dentist is trying to buy his next Porsche in my mouth from, from the work that he's doing in my mouth. Like it's that kind of thing or do whatever insurance covers. Like I wanted to come up with a solution that fixes that problem and get the entire team on the same page and takes out like your opinion from what you're recommending and makes a third party tool that allows you to take opinions out of it, bringing facts into it. The other thing that this tool does is it, you know, a hygienist may not explain all the modalities. You know, a lot of our practices, you know, are now air adding airway to their, their modalities, uh, implantology, um, you know, other services. And the hygiene department is the key to having that turn out because you can't run a profitable practice in today's world if you're having to take all this time to educate. This is the other thing. It takes a few minutes max that sets, people don't buy solutions to problems that they don't think they have. This highlights the symptom that they're dealing with and it does it in a way that um, allows the patient to come to their own uh, reality about what's happening in their mouth. So. You know, a lot of times our, our practices don't want to highlight problems. Like they just want to go to, they, they feel badly. They have this like shame or guilt about saying you have this problem and they make the patient's problem their problem. This fixes all that. The other thing it fixes is if you haven't, you know, we call it a, you know, supervised neglect. If you've been in supervised neglect and you haven't recommend treat, treatment, this is also works very well. I'm working with a doctor in Des Moines. Um, he, he had a, a uh, he just purchased a watch uh, Timex practice where they watch everything. You know, that's my joke of the night. That's my dad joke of the night. All right, Tanya, that's all I got. And, and he's like, Gary, I'm coming in with laser and airway. And, you know, I'm coming in with all this and, and his goodwill is not being transitioned. So whether you're in your existing practice and you're gonna start educating from a new place because it's time for you to do that, or you're purchasing a practice, 
um, or you bring in on an associate. This is the tool, the keystone for all of it, because what it does is it puts the power of education in the hygienist's hands. It also gives you leverage. So the hygienist has an hour to do this and they walk through with the patient. These are all the symptoms. They check the boxes and it becomes a report card for where they're starting from. And then you are now just using language that the patient understands. You're starting with what they have. And here's one of the key elements to this. And it's a real profound statement. Connect with the patient with what they're connected to. The problem for patient education is the patient is not connected to these things. What they're connected to is looking good, feeling good. You know, they, but if you don't identify the symptoms of that, you can't open the dialogue to have the patient buy treatment, then you end up selling treatment. So we're gonna show them how you would present this. Next, let's do that. Uh, we, we keep introducing our healthy mouth baseline. This is so vital for your practice. This is so important. It has so much great information for every patient. And this is constantly changing because each appointment is different. On the back, we actually have some healthy facts here. How your mouth talks to your body and your body talks to your mouth. Here are some true statistics. People actually use this and educate their friends and family and take this home. This is how we're getting San Diego to be the number one healthiest city in the United States by 2022. Jenna here. Had a beautiful blood pressure of 120 over 80, pulse 65. I really make it personal for their own benefit. Here's her next appointment. We talked about her gums. We did some laser today. I did. Uh, I took some impressions for perio trays. She has a uh, cavity on number 18. We need to replace that with a crown. She is clenching and grinding, so we need to get her a night guard to be preventative, so we don't have to do any more. Um, be preventative, so we don't have any fractures in the future. She does have experienced some dry mouth lately, and so I'm gonna prescribe her some Nutricel. So please use this every patient, every time. It has so many benefits and it makes it personal for the patient. It makes them not wanna say, hey, I get this every single time. No, this is theirs to take home and to educate others. Thank you. Yeah, Tanya, this also gives a systematic, systematic approach for education. Um, because one, one of the things we found in our diagnosis of, of hygiene visits, only 1% of the time was, was spent discussing symptoms or health. 1% of the time. These are mind-blowing numbers. Mainly it's like being related and then just checking the boxes. But when you put a systematic approach in and you have multiple hygienists, now all of a sudden you're getting full case presentation of all those elements that you weren't getting before. And your case, your case presentation goes up and your acceptance goes up. And it's just so important for patients to have this visual also. They just don't know. And if we're not telling them, they're never gonna get the information. I mean, it, it, you, it's doing the job that, that we wanna do. So this healthy mouth baseline can take a lot of different um, forms. This is one out of a practice that works in Puerto Rico and they're putting pictures in, intraoral pictures. They drop them in before they send them home. Here's another example, right? This is just a very different visual, uh, but it also is effective. So if you guys want your own tonight, this we're going to put it in the chat. There'll be a link. You can go in, down, and just copy that link, and you can go in and get your own. Um, and when we talk about what's healthy for gums, it's also really important that your entire team is on the same page and that there's a standard for healthy gums. So I'm going to ask you, what is your standard? This is not acceptable, right? How much bleeding is acceptable? It's hard to answer that question. We don't have a great answer for this in the profession as a whole. It's, it's hard to say what, what is healthy, what's not healthy, how many bleeding points are you going to allow? I, I think it's impossible to get everybody to zero. I don't think that's practical, but you know that it's not right when you see it. This is unacceptable. This is unacceptable. Not acceptable. Right? If you go back to some of the early data, you see that bleeding on probing was looked at as a risk factor and also a determinant, a data point for when um, you can count on patients staying healthier. Lack of bleeding on probing. So the presence of bleeding is not what we're talking about. Continuous lack of bleeding on probing was a highly accurate predictor of no further periodontal damage. And you guys, this is just 
real world dentistry that you do all the time and you are faced, doctors, let's just stop for a moment. A lot of the times you don't get to see the worst of it, right? You come in at the end of the hygiene visit, the end of the maintenance appointment, and those patients are looking good. You didn't see all the blood that was there. So, but trying to get your patients healthier, looking at those probe charts, looking at your bleeding points, it's really important. And this is where the prescription tray therapy started. It all started with this man, his name is Dwayne Keller, and he's treating his mother, the woman on the right in the blue dress. They couldn't get her periodontal disease under control. They sent her out for surgery. Wasn't so effective. She refused to go back for more. It's so important that he created a way um, and he was the very first person to ever to ever develop this kind of technology and to get it uh, cleared through the uh, Food and Drug Administration so it could go to market. And I just wanna show you what some before and after imaging that you can expect when you use these prescription tray therapies. You can do so much good for your patients. This is two weeks of tray therapy. This is for a patient who has Parkinson's disease, two weeks. This is a month of tray therapy. This is a patient who has type two diabetes and he's had a heart attack and he's only in his thirties. Look at the difference just in tray therapy, same patient. Now you always use prescription trays in combination with scaling or surgery, but I just wanna give you an idea of what you can expect even before that. If you start with the prescription trays and debridement, most people use their trays in maintenance, but the really innovative way to do it is to do it even before scaling or surgery because you're gonna have the best, healthiest tissue possible before you go in and do your scaling or surgical procedures. This again, trays with debridement only. Now, when you add it to maintenance, really nice. So how do you incorporate this tray therapy into your practice? You set up a standard of care. We recommend you pick a set number of bleeding points. Um, we like 10, I've talked to hundreds of doctors and hygienists, probably thousands at this point, um, about what would be the appropriate number. And out of all those conversations, we came up with 10 bleeding points. So anyone who's got 10 or more bleeding points, that's not completely localized, you need some help. A tray therapy addresses the entire arch. This is a great option also for those patients who are high risk. They have systemic chronic inflammatory conditions. Maybe they smoke, maybe they have an implant. Um, or you D-band ortho, get them out of aligners. They've got four and five millimeter pockets, especially in the posterior. You can clean up the gums, get rid of the infection and the inflammation, and also you will whiten their teeth, especially if you're using, uh, it'll take, take about five weeks when you're using the low concentration of peroxide, but you will whiten their teeth. Now, we know we're not doing a great job, right? As, as a profession, if half of, half of Americans over the age of 30 have periodontitis, the chronic form of gum disease. That, I would not call that success. We have tried antibiotic therapy. Frankly, antibiotics are not a great solution because biofilms, the community of bacteria, develop resistances to antibiotics. And this is true for any biofilm-based infection, right? Periodontitis is just a classic biofilm-based infection, like a chronic sinus infection, chronic bladder infection, chronic inner ear infection. You might need rounds and rounds of antibiotics. Um, they just aren't as effective against, bi antibiotics are not as effective against biofilms, and they're even less effective. We are in a post-antibiotic age, everybody. Before the pandemic exploded here in the United States, a report was published. I saw it first in January of last year, where the director of the CDC says, you know, don't talk about a coming post-antibiotic era. We're here, and there are a lot of bacterial-based infections that are not responding to antibiotic therapy at all. So CDC recommends that you use systemic antibiotics as your very last option. Um, I'm gonna suggest to you that you give real consideration to this hydrogen peroxide. It's not a new drug. It's a long-standing drug, completely biocompatible, great broad-spectrum antimicrobial. FDA classifies peroxide as an oral debriding agent and an oral wound cleanser if it's under a 3% concentration or less. We found in research that if you leave it at a low concentration like 1.5 or 1.7%, then um, you won't cause as many sensitivities. It's an excellent option because nobody's allergic to peroxide. We're all making it in our liver. There's peroxide in your white blood cells. Every time you exhale, there's peroxide in your mouth. Bacteria don't build up resistances to peroxide the way they do to antibiotics. And peroxide has three excellent broad spectrum antimicrobials. 
uh, properties. The first is that it will debride the matrix. The matrix is like a gooey, slimy covering on a biofilm. It's a, it's a physical barrier, a physical protective layer. Antibiotics cannot cut well through that. Chlorine-based products and hydrogen peroxide-based products can. Then hydrogen peroxide will debride a bacterial cell wall. Essentially, your bacterial cell wall is a bunch of proteins linked together. It cuts through the linking um, protein chains and you will get a hole in that bacterial cell wall and it's gonna die. And you're gonna kill all kinds of bacteria, aerobic, anaerobic, facultative anaerobes, all kinds of bacteria will die during this treatment. But what is really important, because it's not just about killing bacteria, it's about creating the right microenvironment for healthy bacteria to grow. When the hydrogen peroxide's bubbling up, it's releasing oxygen gas. That is a great way to change the microenvironment with this oxygen. Think about this, gram-negative obligate anaerobes, this oxygen is gonna be toxic to them. You're never gonna sterilize the pocket with this therapy. That's not what we want. We want to decrease the bacterial load by killing bacteria, changing the environment so when you take the tray out of the mouth, you get healthy bacteria to regrow at the expense of the pathogens. So one of the things we told you we were gonna tell you tonight is the two protocols for using these trays. So I wanna go through those quickly. Gary, I know this has revolutionized um, a lot of the, the perio treatment in your offices. I've seen these really great results, whether you use the trays in maintenance or whether you use them um, in initial therapy. So the first way to use it and the easiest way to use it is to think about your maintenance patients who are struggling between office visits. You would probe and take impressions. You can scan if you prefer. Um, three weeks later, roughly, two if you scan, you're gonna deliver trays. In maintenance, they use the trays twice a day. 10 minutes is good, 15 minutes is ideal. The gel's formulated really different. There's a slow, consistent release of oxygen. You want it at least 10 minutes, but 15 is best. You get all the oxygen benefits at 15. Twice a day, 10 to 15 minutes, and then in maintenance, you're gonna try to drop them down one time a day as quickly as possible. I'd like to show you just a few studies here, a few case studies. So this is a patient who needed surgery. This is the patient three months after that surgical intervention. I think that's a really good surgical outcome. This is the day that the prescription trays were delivered. They were used twice a day with the hydrogen peroxide gel for six weeks. And then the patient looks like this. Now look at that tissue. Of course they had a Profi too. That's why the tooth surfaces look so amazing, but look at the tissue. Put that in succession, that's gorgeous. Twice a day, down to once a day. And now once a day, the patient just sticks with this treatment once a day you can have good long-term results. In the longest study that um, I know of, data was collected following patients for up to five years. They had a seven, these are refractory maintenance patients, right? The worst of your worst. 75% reduction in bleeding that they were able to maintain for five years it's for the duration of the study. Okay, so that's the maintenance protocol. Twice a day, 10 to 15 minutes, down to one time a day. The initial prescription protocol, what we call the IRX protocol, you use for the initial prescription, initial phase, you're gonna do your evaluation and diagnosis. They use the trays three times a day for two weeks. And here's why, every time you use this tray, it pushes the medication down, it debrides the slimy matrix, and then the, the exposed surface layer, it's like you peel off a layer of an onion. In the beginning, you do this application frequently, and you will significantly decrease the bacterial load. It, it, when you look at the DNA testing, it is a really dramatic drop. Three times a day, for two weeks, then you start your scaling or your surgery if you need, if that's what's called for. You drop down to twice a day until the post-op or the recare, and then you can go down to one time a day. Let me just show you, this is a really egregious case um, because it's unusual also because this patient refuses to brush or floss. For whatever reason, he'll use trays, but he won't brush or floss. He has some isolated areas of really serious destruction he would use the trays. And the reason I like this case, because he doesn't brush your floss, is it shows you what the hydrogen peroxide will do when it's held in place with this special prescription tray. It denatures it. Hydrogen peroxide as an antimicrobial agent works by breaking down protein chains. Calculus is essentially a skeleton of protein. If this patient had brushed his teeth, it, you wouldn't see quite all of this gooey stuff. It's so easy to remove. Hygienist, if you're on, it makes your life so much easier if they use the trays um, between maintenance appointments or even before scaling because this is super soft and easy to remove. This is the same patient six months later. This is after a maintenance appointment, 
but look at how much improvement there is. 100% bleeding on probing down to 6%. So you can get your patients healthier so much faster and maintain that for years, ideally for their life, right? So if you're focusing on health, this was our first step, right? Focusing on health, you're getting your patients healthier. You're improving their, you get higher satisfaction ratings. We see it across the board. Um, but how do you put, again, good clinical practice, right? We're focusing on good cl clinical practice. How do you put that good clinical practice into a model so that you also generate revenue and have more success? And Gary, one of the reasons I love your model, again, is it doesn't require expensive new marketing tools. You start with the existing patient base. So I'm going to turn this presentation over to you for a bit, and let's talk about this really important way to build a practice. Thanks, Tanya. Um, one of the things that how this got built was, you know, in order to be the dentist you were trained to be, the problem is our dentists are spending way too much time on the business side of their practice, and it keeps them from serving patients that they want to help. And they get frustrated, they get they get overwhelmed. They're trying to do social media and all this stuff. And when you learn that everything you need is an arm's length away or a shift in paradigm away from the, the things you've been doing. So like, I don't wanna take you so far out. It's, that's not what this is. How do we work with what we already have? And when you move from a transactional practice, which you know, you're, you're, you're doing transactional dentistry to um, a complete health practice, all of a sudden, you know, we believe that a dentist, it shouldn't be hard to run a practice and be a great dentist. And balancing the business and, and clinical side is difficult. You just gave them some very simple tools to build the foundation of their practice in hygiene, which is the engine that's going to run this. So there's three simple things that you can focus on. And I want to really highlight them here. We call them our care system. So first you have to care. If you don't care about the impact on the patient, it's not going to work, right? And that's why we use the acronym CARE so you can remember there's three ways to build a practice. O, C, A is case acceptance, R is retention, and E is the experience and acquisition of new patients. Now, Tanya, when I first, I'm a business guy, I'm not a clinician. I, I learned the clinical side of dentistry after when my dad had a heart attack and I went into a hygiene you know, training session and I was doing systems and processes, which I, that was the only part of my repertoire. And then they said, well, how was your dad's perio? And my dad had quintuple bypass, lived, he's still living. And they asked how his perio was. And I'm like, my dad had a heart attack. And they said, you didn't know about the oral systemic connection. And I said, no, um, because I'm just here to do business structure and systems, build a harmonious team and produce outcomes. And when I had that epiphany, that's when I realized that is the holy grail for dentistry, because here's, you want, I'm a numbers guy, so you want to get some stats here. For those people that don't like numbers out there, and most of our doctors that are struggling financially, they, they resist numbers. I want to give you a new context to hold numbers. Numbers are the scoreboard for the impact that you make on your team, your patients and your team. So when you make a positive impact, the quantifiable way is to look at when they pay you, when they show up, when they do those things, that's, that's our measure. So I really got to look at this and I, I we, you know, cause we have stats, the average, let's, let's do another test. And I appreciate everybody, you know, putting in Scott and Cliff and, and uh, Deputy Dr. Kieran. What do you think the average retention is in a dental practice of a patient coming back twice? So if you have a hundred patients, how many of those come back twice in your hygiene department in one year on average? And let's not even talk about the pandemic. It's, it's actually gotten worse if you don't reinvent yourself here. And that's why a lot of dentists are struggling. Their retention, they don't focus in on that first. All right, oh, my man, Cliff, he, you know what? Cliff is so spot on. He had 20% and he had 80% this time. Yes, yes, this is what everybody thinks. Because if you don't track it, that's what everybody goes. They say, you know, most people say, Wes is saying more, Cliff is saying 80. And again, this is not to shame you in any way, guys and gals. It is just to bring reality to the situation. 20% of patients come back twice. Now, you might be sitting there going, there's no way. It's like, here's why. Because you, the ones you see are the ones that come back. It's the ones that you don't see that don't come back. And if you don't quantify it, it's a game changer. This is the leakage. And you could do it very simply. If you're getting 500 patients a year and you've been in practice 
for 10 years, the math says 5,000 patients. I'll see this practice having 1,000 patients, right? So, you know, what successful dentists are doing differently is they're, they're plugging the back door of their practice. And if you take a different approach now that they, you need to land these planes and you're the air traffic controller in your practice, the intention that you have, and if you're, you turn into a complete health practice, if they're not coming to your practice twice a year, you can't get them healthy. And that's going to impact their mouth, their body, their immune system, and on and on. So retention is number one. Case acceptance, because of time, I'm going to fast forward you, 28%. Now, 28%, that's with people not using that, the um, healthy mouth baseline. So 28% of people who actually go through um, you know, a practice, and what happens is using that healthy mouth baseline, the case presented goes up, as does the cases accepted. And Tanya, I think you missed one slide here. I wanted to go over and show this quantifiable way just going to walk you through this. So this is how we, we, we judge the potential of your practice. And I invite you to take out a pen. And actually, we're going to actually walk you through um, a, an online quiz that you'll be able to do really quick. Tanya's going to do it. But the average adult, when you have a good case acceptance system in your practice, that's a team-based case acceptance system using the, the five steps. We showed you one of the steps, which is the healthy mouth baseline. The average adult will invest in the value of a crown and buildup. Let's say you're a fee-for-service practice that's $1,500. Then when you retain your patients, plug the hole in the back, two profies, two exams, set of bite wings, 350. The average annual value of an adult becomes 1850. Now this practice, and we're saying 18 months now, we used to say 12 months, but because of the pandemic, we've expanded it. If a patient did, you know, if a patient has come in the practice within the last 18 months in this practice, we were working with this morning, this practice, no kidding, $75,000 a month they were doing, do the math, it's just under a million dollars. They have 3,000 patients. Their potential capacity is $5.5 million. When I showed this to the spouse and the doctor, Tanya, this morning, their jaw was on the floor. And you know, some people might be sitting there going, well, these are inflated numbers. My numbers are not that. I don't have that many patients. Let's just say I'm cuckoo crazy, which I am a little bit. Like a quarter of this will get you there. And this is how we can grow practices so quickly because it's already there, but you're not looking at the two strategies. We want to flip the script and focus on retention, focus on case acceptance, and then fill your new patients as a tertiary way to build your practice. So now we can move on. I want to give you uh, four benchmarks to operate by. And these four benchmarks uh, really allow you to really establish how effective you are. First of all, you want to have 67% of your cases accepted. Uh, like I said, it was 28. We move, you want to move that from 28 to 67. Your life becomes easier. You can do lower volume. You could do bigger cases because you're putting your attention on case acceptance, right? Not just the drill, fill, and build machine and put your roller skates on and crank out dentistry. The next is pre-appointing patients. You know, if I ask this question just for time, I'm going to save that. The average person would say, 95% of my patients are, are, are pre-appointed. We find it down to the 65% level. Interesting. These, by the way, you might think that 65 and 90 is not that far off, but the trajectory of when you have 28% to 67%, 65% to 90%, perio maintenance at 35%, if 47% of your adult patients have some form of perio, you want to have that as a benchmark. We see it when we first start with people at eight and four. And then your retention, you know, you're never going to have 100%. And that, that those numbers I showed you were at 100%. But like you said, just like Dr. Clifford, we want you to be in that 80 percentile. Now, here's what this does. I'm just going to translate this, how it's going to change your life. Dennis, most doctors look at what's in their bank account, and that tells them how they're doing. That is called an output number that is just going to keep causing you stress. Then up from that is your production and collection output number. We're going to move you to input numbers, which happen seven months prior to the money getting into your bank account. If you don't pre-appoint, they're not going to show up in your hygiene department. If they don't show up in their hygiene department, you can't educate them and let them know what they need and why they need it and put a system in to get it accepted. What happens from that is now we're down six months. They don't get into the doctor's schedule. You can't collect the money. And then I can then predict how much you're going to have in your bank account 
seven months prior when you move the formula forward. So let's deepen this, Tanya, and talk about how to build your business model. So you move away from being busy to being outcome-based. So it's all about what I call reverse engineering. There's a challenge with dentists in that only 4% of dentists retire financially free. I said, not on my watch. It's not going to happen ever again in, in the doctors that we have. And it's not because here's why. When you reverse engineer where you want to land the plane, you can then know what you have to do, where you have to take off, when you have to take off, and what height and what dimension and what, and then you can adjust based upon wind and air, right? So the same is true with landing your plane with money. So if you want to collect two, 2 million and you write off 10%, you have to produce 2.2. Now here, doctors, if you want to take more time off, this is where you do it. Because here's, there's something called Parkinson's law. Do you ever notice that that your expenses rise to meet your new levels of income, or you fill time to meet the deadlines or how much time you have available. You want to uncollapse your time and money here. You're going to say, I'm going to do this amount of money in this amount of time. You're going to take six weeks off. Tanya, when I was talking to Dr. Vikas this morning and his wife was there and I said, he goes, I can't take any time off. He goes, you know, we got to keep this machine going. I said, if you don't put six weeks in off for now, his wife was like in tears that they're going to go to Disneyland. They're going to take, they have young kids and they were slaving over their business and they didn't put any boundaries in. If you don't put boundaries in, what happens is you just fill time and then you're just busy being busy rather than being productive. This is how you flip the script. You say, I'm going to work four days a week. I'm going to take six weeks off. I'm going to have two hygienists. We call them high geniuses just because we like to make it fun and they, they take on a new persona. Um, when, you, when you back this out, um, you wanna get the hygiene days and there's a typo there. It's, it's supposed to be one, one uh, our hygienists in complete health are, are doing one 1,600 a day. Yes, 1,600 a day. And that might seem like a lot, but if you just learned with Tanya what she talked about, and you talk about the possibility of treating a patient and taking care of them, and you offer perio trays, that's $800 for a set of perio trays that is gonna completely arrest bacteria, inflammation, not only in the mouth, but its impact on the body, it's priceless. And if you have a systematic approach, like we showed you with the healthy mouth baseline, you're gonna close those cases. We're gonna show you the impact on this. So if you're doing, you know, if you're a profi mill, you're never gonna get there. And if you have low insurance pays, you're never gonna get there, but you can't change your insurance pay if you don't increase your case acceptance because otherwise the patients are gonna leave you and you're gonna crash. You don't wanna do that. So if there's 368 hygiene days at 1600, that's $588,000 in hygiene revenue, highly profitable by the way. And then if we divide out we minus that from the total production needed, it leaves us with 1.611. Divide that out by 184 days, you need to do 8756. Now, most people go, well, all right, I'm doing 5,000, that seems like a leap. Well, it, it does when you don't have these systems in, and it does if you don't like to sell and you don't have a system to help you, you and your team overcome that, right? And that's what we showed you today. But now when you need to know how much you need to present per day, and by the way, you never present treatment that's not there, but when you put that healthy mouth baseline in, and I'm gonna show you real numbers, um, that's when your treatment presented goes way up because there was no benchmark for what is healthy, soft tissue, hard tissue, and other symptoms that a dentist can treat like airway. You're not watching anymore. You're proactively treating and helping people prevent. Exactly. I, got, I was on a roll, Tanya, when you jumped, when you, when you stopped in, you like spooked me out. That was awesome. Um, I'm on a roll here because I want to make sure we end on time and I don't want to rush either. So thank you for that. Um, am I going too fast or am I, am I being clear here? All right, cool. Um, you have to present if you're closing 67% and you need to do, do 9,000 or eight, um, uh, let's say 87.56, you, you divide out by 1.67, that tells you how much you need to present per day. A lot of offices are not presenting enough dentistry that is needed and wanted. And in my second book, you're gonna get a copy of this book, you'll get a chance for that. My second book uh, is called Raise Your Healthy Deserve Level. And I was talking to doctors today, Dr. Taylor, and she was so great and transparent and vulnerable. She said, Gary, I didn't think I deserved to have money. So therefore, how does that trickle down? Well. Um, when you're chair side, she goes, I can't tell you how many times I pull back and I don't present care because I don't think 
you know, I don't want to be a bother. I don't want to like, and she made it about herself and she got to see that she doesn't think she deserves to treat patients with veneers. And she had this breakthrough awareness that in life, she doesn't get what she deserves. She gets what she thinks she deserves. The minute she got to see that now, all of a sudden she had her breakthrough in, in, in presenting care. And so when you break it down by day, how much you need to do, it's like, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. And what happens is, you know, most practices wake up, they have bonus systems, maybe at the end of the month, we want everybody to be intentional to get people healthy. That's the purpose of the practice. And then they need to know what their measure is, because a lot of people will say, well, I feel like I had a good day. Well, you had 27 cents in your, in your schedule. You feel like you had a good day because a lot of people validated you. And that's the currency of humanist participants on your team. And that, that doesn't allow you to have it all and make it all work. And so I want you to know, I have a lot of compassion for that. And we walk, we walk people through this being just feeling good about the day to doing good work, making a difference and making sure that the mothership, the practice is taken care of. And so these are the benchmarks. These are called daily primary outcomes. And when you go to your huddle, your team knows what their daily primary outcome is and they can self-diagnose whether they're doing well or not. And this way it takes it off of you to pressure your team and then they take responsibility for it. And then this is what we do to turbocharge it. Tanya, the next slide. Um, what, well, I, I, there was one slide that was missed. It was the, the bonus structure. Did I not do that? I must've missed it. Oh, well. But what you do is, and you'll get a copy of my book and it'll distinguish. You bonus your team each time that they hit that daily primary outcome. And you only pay it if you collect the amount of money you need. So it has them focus on their one outcome that they need to produce. If you're an appointment coordinator, you have to fill the schedule to a certain amount. If you're a treatment coordinator, you have to close a certain amount. If you're a, an assistant, you have to do and create what the doctor's number is, that, that, that number of 9,000 a day. Now, all of a sudden, everybody's playing on the same playing field with the same currencies. See, this is where the battle is. A doctor's playing golf and trying to get the ball in the hole. The team is playing defense on a football field and there's no hole on the football field. And it ends up where the doctor plays on the team's field versus the team playing on the, the field that allows the triple win to happen. The patients win, the team wins, and, and the practice owner wins. So let's just unpack the million dollar hygiene formula that we promised, Tanya. We'll go to that next. And so this is the way we have practices getting to a million dollars. See, if you don't have a benchmark that that's where you want to take your business, some of you are trying to get to a million dollars just in your practice. So that's good news. You'll be able to have um, a portion of this. But I want for those practices that are really serious about creating a million dollar uh, hygiene department, three hygienists doing uh, 300, uh, two hygienists doing $300,000 in revenue, right? So for every doctor, there's two hygienists. That's your retention because that, that tells you you're retaining your patients. The annual revenue, just hygiene revenue is $600,000. When you educate your patients using the intro all camera and the, high, the, the healthy mouth baseline, you'll be able to uh, generate on average of uh, 400,000 annually. So 600 plus 400 gives you your million dollars. And that, that just creates a priceless impact on your own practice and the people. See, this is the scoreboard for the impact that you're having on people. So I wanna reverse engineer it a little bit more. If you're giving your hygienist four weeks off, they're working 48 weeks with four days, 192 days. If you divide that out into the 300,000, it means you need to do 1562, or we roll it up to 1600 a day in hygiene. If you're seeing eight patients a day, that's $195 per patient per day on average. And that's why if you know you raise up and you want to get your percentage of perio to uh, soft tissue care, and then add things like prescription trays, and we recommend, um, you know, personally, my company recommends PeriProtect. And, you know, when you really look at the revenue here, it's the $300 fee if, you know, everything out the door. And you, as a doctor, you don't have to touch this. You charge $800 uh, for the two trays and four tubes of gel, you know, that's a $500 profit and that's really powerful here. And, you know, if you do one case a week for 48 weeks and then just do the math, it, it can be for some of you, your entire year of salary and you can double your salary just adding this into the system. And, and go ahead, Tanya. 
Yeah, these numbers, while they're just there for you to play with, let's see what some of the practices that work with your team, Gary, um, can have actually done. Yeah, uh, Dr. F out in California just, I mean, he has a soft tissue program and added um, a Paraprotect to it. You know, he's doing $10,000 more per month. I mean, you know, Dr. F in Pennsylvania, he's doing, you know, 433. Um, and he doesn't, touch any of this, you know, Dr. B in Nevada, you know, they're doing 12,000 a month. And, you know, when you look at Dr. Dr. H in Florida um, at 10, eight, I mean, these are, you know, these are the, the profitability on 10,000 is like, it, it shows up to be about seven, 7,000, you know, around $7,000. So the key thing though, is that everybody wins the patients getting healthy. They, they feel tangible results. They see them in the whitening. It, they reduce, um, you know, bad breath. Um, the impact on the hygiene department when you add perio trays changes everything. And so I want to bring some some clear, you know, you talked about the dashboard, Tanya. Um, these are the things that we automate your practice. So um, automating your practice with platforms is key. And there's so many platforms available today. We like the ones that take measuring things out of it. So you just plug it in and all you have to look at it is automatically in, in your hygiene department or your morning huddle every day. This is um, Josh Merrill. Now they have 2,500 people in New London, Ohio. He was like ready to hang his loop. So he felt like he was at capacity. He was sitting there. He would do 400 in July, 2017, when he first started implementing the system. And this was pulled right from the dashboard, 449 visits with $77,000 in net production. Fast forward post pandemic, and I, I chose this date because I wanna show you that, that this works. On the backside of reopening in July, after a couple of months closed, 728 visits and 167 in production. And then let's take a look at, he in 2017 did not have a healthy mouth baseline. He did not have his um, team engaged. Um, he did not have roles and responsibilities. He did not have a team leader who was putting in agreements. And he was doing 81 presented, 51 accepted, 64% case acceptance. The percentage is good, but look at this. Yes, his accepted rate went down, but look what happened. 221,000 and presented, 121 and accepted. And this is not selling dentistry. This is just putting in the healthy mouth baseline in hygiene. And this is what happened. Excuse me, this is what happens. It just automatically happens when you have an engaged hygienist, like we showed you. This is what I was talking about retention 77% retention in 2017. Look at this 2020, 91%. People do not leave without an appointment in this practice, closing the back door, having them engaged, and this is the impact that it can have. So if you guys are interested in knowing what can happen for your own practice, we're gonna try this tonight. So I wanna just show you how this quiz works. You can do it yourself. Um, you'll get a link to this after the event. And I'm just gonna run through this. It takes really less than a minute. We have one location. We're gonna say we have no associates, four ops. Years in practice, we're just gonna go with 10. Gross annual revenue for fun, we're gonna pick a million. How many active patients? Let's say we have 1,500. And you put your name in, put your email address in. This is so simple for you and your team. Say yes, and then you hit submit and it'll tell me that I'm working at 44% capacity. I've got some improvement here and we're gonna be able to get so many patients healthier. Um, your next step here is if you want more information about this, how did they come up with these numbers? What can you do to improve your numbers? You can go ahead and submit for a, for a call. Um, this other link here is the same thing, discovery call. For those of you tonight, if you are interested also in learning about um, this prescription tray therapy, what we do all day, all the time is train offices and we are here for your success. As long as you schedule your training session, it'll be free. Um, you just have to schedule by February 12th and you can use this uh, contact information to do that. I know we've got some questions coming in. Some we've already answered. Side effects of prescription tray therapy. 
the two nicest, biggest are whiter teeth and fresher breath, but really there are very few side effects um, for this excellent home care therapy. Very, very rare is sensitivity because it's such a low concentration of peroxide. If you all have questions, go ahead and start. We're moving into the Q&A. Um, someone asked, according to those treatment protocols, you remember the maintenance protocol, it was twice a day down to once a day. If you use trays before scaling or surgery, it was a three, two, one protocol, but in maintenance, how long do they stay at twice a day? I really want to personalize this for your practice. The minimum amount of time is two weeks, but depending on how busy your practice is, you can have them continue on it twice a day until their next maintenance appointment before you drop them down to one time a day. Our goal though is to get them down to one time a day as quickly as possible because of course it's a lot easier to do. Uh, cost of trays, cost of gel, cost to patients for all of this. Does insurance pay for it? What are your codes? Um, in your training program, if you sign up for that, we will go over all of this carefully. I'm gonna answer it fast. Your lab fee for a set of trays, a home care kit, everything is roughly $200. The gel, your fee is $14 a tube. That, that depends on volume. Um, cost of to patients is somewhere between, you know, $600 on the low end to $1,200 on the high end. It's this gigantic range. We recommend 800 and that includes four tubes of gel, which was some of the numbers that you saw tonight. Does insurance pay? Sometimes PPOs are not paying well. Um, some of the some of the plans and offline, I'll tell you uh, which ones are paying better. Somewhere between 300 and 450 a tray. There are two codes for your trays. D5995 is for the maxillary arch. D5996 is for the mandibular arch. Those are new as of this year. You used to use different codes. Uh, gel is 9630. Um, and then again, does insurance generally cover it? I will say genuinely, generally it does not cover um, trays. Even if it did though, they would max out their allowance. Their allowance. What is nice because this prescription tray, at least the ones that um, we are manufacturing, they're cleared, they're, in fact, the ones from Periprotect are the only trays that are cleared by the Food and Drug Administration for this. And they are cleared as a prescription medical device. So if your patients have an HSA or an FSA, it applies. Um, how much does the supply of gel cost? Uh, and retail terms, most offices are charging about um, $25 a tube. So you can set whatever fees you want and we're happy to talk to you about that. Uh, he was talking about, it's challenging to find a hygienist. He finally got one after eight to nine months. And we see this as a reoccurring issue. And I wanna address that. Um, What's different about attracting people at post pandemic is you wanna package your practice as a product that your team buys into every day. And so you, you know, in the past, you could just put an ad in and, and, and get you know, uh, team members. And it's especially important with hygienists because a lot of them uh, happen to be moms, they're homeschooling. Uh, some are concerned about um, coming back with COVID. Um, so the supply and demand has shifted. And we've been really successful at a few things. Um, one of which is packaging your practice in a way that allows you to um, say, like, are you, that has a purpose and you leave with a purpose. So it's not like, you know, busy practice, needs a hygienist, la, la, la. You wanna speak to, you know, our practice is to get 100,000 people in Reno and Tahoe healthy by the year 2025. We believe that on a good day, we save a smile and on a great day, we save a life. We are looking for a hygienist that is going to be a mission, a missionary with us to get our patients healthy and transform their lives. Now, you have a lot of practices that are sitting out there with hygienists that are bored. They're not empowered. They, they sit there. They can't make recommendations. They don't have standards of care. And so when you, when you think of repackaging your practice and then marketing it in a way that really talks about your vision, purpose, and values and the mission that you have behind it, especially millennials, you know, in the baby boomer days, it was like a job and I work there. Millennials want to work in a place that is meaningful and it's transformational. And when you offer that to them and you, you teach them about how you're going to enhance the quality of their lives by working in the practice, by giving them bonuses, and you'll be able to afford bonuses. If you're sitting there and say, I can't afford bonuses in 401ks, you absolutely can when you run a more profitable, effective business. And that's what's needed in today's world um, to attract your A team. So that was a, a great question, Dr. Kieran. Thank you for that. Um, uh, let's see, I have uh, a couple of others here. Um, oh, um, uh, oh, here's one. 
I'm a startup and I have, I, I have been the hygienist and dentist. My new patient appointment takes two hours. I have a challenge now that I'm bringing in a hygienist and how do I, how do I get this all organized? Well, the key is just like I, I you know, I, if you just chat into my team, um, they'll give you the roles and responsibilities. We believe everything should be templated. We have everything templated so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So what we do is we structure what a new patient, um, a new patient system is step by step with the protocol. And you don't have to write all these things out. We have them done for you and then you can customize them and then you can get them signed off and agreed upon. And then we have an automated learning management system or you get a learning management system that teaches them how to do the step-by-step -step protocol. So everything in today's world using technology is all automated. So I really suggest everything templated, everything systematized, and it just takes simple steps and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's already been done for you. So that's a great, great question. By the way, congratulations on your, your startup. And um, I, I was working with a new startup today, like I said, in Des Moines. And when you please take that quiz, because when you take that quiz, you're going to see actually how much you have available. I know if it's a scratch start, you know, obviously you need patients, but it's mind blowing when you buy a practice, what the capacity is. And this is why by, by the there's a lot of, uh, PE firms buying practices up because they're all undervalued. Please don't sell your practice undervalued. Do that quiz. See what your capacity is. That's why these, these companies are getting rich buying these practices because they're so underpriced. If you're getting ready to sell your practice in five years or so, please do not you know, really go to work on it because this is your retirement and we want you to retire financially free. So that's a great question. Um, is this available in Canada? Uh, uh, our program is, is, is available in Canada. We have tons of practices in Vancouver, BC, um, about three, I think we're in three provinces in Canada. We actually have a coach in Canada. So yeah, Canada is like blowing up and is Periprotect available in Canada? Yes, it is. So um, the gel actually is manufactured. The same gel has gotten in and there are several labs in Canada. So give us a call. We will get you connected. Yeah, and the power, of, the power of community is really important. We have a community of people in 44 states, three provinces of Canada and some islands down in the Caribbean, and you become a part of a mission. That's the other thing. Don't go at this alone. Be a part of a tribe of people that really care and contribute. And so like, you know, like let's say we have LA practices, you can go and train in those practices and they're opening their doors to train you. It's like, there's really the power of community and that's what came out, you know, I'm a New Yorker and we're, you know, I, I walk practices after 9-11, after 2008 and 1800 practices through the pandemic, furloughing, patient, furloughing teams and then getting them back up and running and they are thriving now. And I'm please get that if, you know, pain is necessary because that tells you change is needed, but if you stay in it, suffering's optional. And the other thing I want to leave you with is, don't make the unacceptable acceptable. Don't put up with the things that don't work for you. Please don't use this as like, I'm not going to take it anymore. Like that Twisted Sister song, like we're not going to take it. Say, no, we ain't going to take it. No, no kidding. Don't take it. And if you're dealing with toxic teams, if you're dealing with a business model that is not producing the money and the time that you deserve, now is the time to get to work on it. Because what are you going to do? Everything's broken up already. You might as well deal with the broken pieces while it's broken and build it back. And, and instead of living in a default practice, live in a design practice that you can sell a top dollar. You know, I'm, I'm feel like I'm being Joel Oldstein right now, Tanya, <laughs> but I'm jacked up because I, I, I feel the pain of dentists not taking action. And it's like, I get it. It's like, yeah. just do it. Just do it. And right. it's just been that year. There's so much going on, right? There's just so much. I'm going to answer a couple more questions that came in through the chat. So back to insurance codes. Um, these are prosthetic codes in the fives, but you have to take an impression or a scan and that's where they were placed. So you're exactly right, doctor. Um, and the other last thing I want to say is um, uh, people asked about working with me directly. I work with the practices that take the quiz and schedule. So for the first 10, it will be with me personally. So um, I'm looking forward to meeting you. Thank you for being with us tonight. And I'm um, just so grateful. Lisa, thank you for Catapult for making a difference for so many dentists. Gary, thank you so much for your time. Um, all, what you do for the profession is really profound and important. And, um, and I know what you want for them. You want happy teams, happy docs. You want people who can focus on the stuff that they love and regain that love for dentistry in some cases 
And I've just seen it happen over and over again with clients um, you know, that we work with, that you also work with. So thank you for that. And everybody, thanks for your time tonight. We look forward to working with you in the future.